I'm sorry. I'm a TV journalist, so I know what is prompters about. That's just technique, so in any, in any minute it can be shut down, so I, I just need some of my writings as well. Hello to everyone. I'm very happy to be here. As a journalist who spent 400 days in jail for my work in Georgia, and especially after Almar presented me, I have to start and I must start and I will start with solidarity with Evan Garashkovic and his incredible family which is here. I hope he will be released very soon and we will have him here free and safe. Evan, we we'll stand with you. So my congratulations to my fellow awardees, very decent people, very kind, the high professionals making world better. I love you guys. Thank you very much for being the kindest persons, professionals, and making world better, as I said. So I'm deeply honored to address you tonight. My special gratitude goes to Committee to Protect Journalists for this award, for standing with me, and especially for standing with my family. My love goes to my wife, Sophia, who is shining here. Uh, and my, I love you. And my children, the eldest one is here, Giko, and other two are in Tbilisi, Georgia. I was born in the Soviet Union in 1976. My parents were so-called intelligentsia, and they were reading a lot. Reading a lot. At the time, we had the you know strange books, hand copied with bindings, barely holdings holding together and covers strangely absent. Among others, one book held a special place and looked like very special. It was called Gospel of John and it began with these words. In the beginning was a word and the word was with God and the word was God. So once in the early 80s, uh, when the Soviet basketball team lost, as usual, to the American team, <laughs> my father found me crying about it. So he told me that all of a sudden, it was very awkward then to me, that I should be happy because Soviets should always lose. So later, I learned that my journalist and writing father was imprisoned for two years in 1969 for being dissident, for his anti-Soviet statements, and for writing and printing illegal underground newsletters. I learned that the truth was being told by the radio by Voice of America, not my Soviet TV. And that music played there was called jazz, and guys singing there were, were Beatles, the Beatles. 
when the Soviet Union collapsed. So I thought that, you know, here it is, freedom, the fresh air. I was 14 or 15 years old, so, but it turned out that the road to the freedom, to freedom was just beginning. After 30 years of Georgia's independence, it was I who became a dissident, imprisoned for my words. I found myself in cell 212 in the Rostavi prison in Georgia, serving my term and making myself the promise to do everything in power, in my power, to ensure that my children would never be confined in a cell for expressing their thoughts and their words, because the word is God. The word is freedom, so freedom is God and God is freedom. In the spirit of Kafka's words, someone must watch, someone must be there. I steadfastly refuse to choose between my homeland and between my freedom, opting for both my homeland and my freedom, for both together. Now I am determined to keep my promise and to carry on with my fight. I profoundly believe that we must not just endure, we will prevail. We must and we will prevail. So I will watch. I will be there in my sweet Georgia, always on my mind. <laughs> so freedom to all political prisoners, Gaumar Josa Kartuelos, Slava Ukraini, peace to Israel and all the peaceful and free people of that region. Thank you so much.